Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to do part two of Pose season three, the final season, episode two. Episode two was very emotional. Um, it's not going to be a long recap review. It was very emotional. Okay, so we're going to start. This whole thing is basically the intervention of Pray Tell. Okay, um, you know, Blanca, Angel, and all her friends, they came together to talk about Pray Tell's intervention, that he needs an intervention because his drinking is getting out of hand. Okay, so they all come to you know, terms of what they're going to do for him. So they, so Electra said that she is going to get everyone in the ball shape because they are going to walk in every category and win the money and trophies. And that money is going to go towards Praytel's um, rehab stay upstate New York. Okay. Um, Lulu and Angel, they starting to look crazy. Okay. You could tell they're doing a little bit more than weed. They are starting to look dry and their lips are looking chapped. They are not looking at their best. And let me tell you something. That those wools, those wooly blunts, are nothing to mess with either. You may not hit you may not be hitting the crack directly, but you're getting it in your system and it will turn you into a crackhead. Okay. Trust and believe in Brooklyn. I seen a lot of guys who was up to par went from sugar to S H I T because of wooly blunts and then going straight to crack. All right. Nowadays, you cannot even do drugs like that because they are putting fentanyl in these drugs. So if anybody wants to smoke crack or do any types of drugs in this day and age, has got to be crazy because it's not straight drugs anymore. They're lacing it with fentanyl. And that fentanyl is a killer. So, but back in the day, you know, when crack and cocaine and all that stuff came out, baby, the crack ever was crazy. The crack ever was crazy. The zon we call them zombies because they came out. They were looking straight zombies. You seen people who always had their stuff together look like a zombie, look crazy, okay? Always. They were, you see them going full shopping every two weeks to not see them do shopping, only shop for oodles and noodles. And we call oodles and noodles, ramen noodles in New York City, we call it crackhead soup. So... And I'm pretty sure in my older videos, y'all probably heard me say, you know, I'm going to eat a crackhead soup. But oodles and noodles, we call crackhead soup. Because that's all the money the crackhead left was to buy was, was oodles and noodles. And it was crackhead soup. But anyway, um, they started to look crazy. And Poppy, he's not stupid. He know what's up. Poppy know what's up. He know what's up. But I'm mad at Angel for slipping like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought she was smarter than that. I really did. Now, Lulu... You will tell she's on the wild side, but I, w I don't want to see her go down either. You know, because she's, she's a very beautiful woman. I don't want to see Lulu go down. And Angel is beautiful, so they need to leave that stuff alone. And if she didn't stop, Angel's going to lose Poppy, okay? But later on, he, he gets her together. He does. Later on, he gets her together. Um, Electra. Electra confronts Lulu about her addiction because she's at the ball, you know, they practicing and she's got, she looked cute with her little Tony Braxton haircut and lip sync and Tony Braxton. She looks cute. But Electra knows that Lulu's not her best. Okay, she knows. So Lulu, so Electra gave Lulu a talk, a motherly talk and told her what she's going to do. She's going to be, the category for her is seamstress. She is going to be behind the scenes on this one. Okay, so Blanca is getting ready to meet Chris' parents. They meet the pain. You know, she meets them and everything. And the mother, the father seems kind of okay. But you could tell they got their stuff together. But the mother is just like, you know, bougie and everything and uppity. And and it's like, mm, I, I felt that it wasn't going to go right. You know, I felt it wasn't going to go right. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so, um... Pray tell. Pray tell. Go visit his friend's cat. His friend Castle. I did not know Castle was sick. You know that bad off sick. It just seems like in this episode, in this season, it seems like everybody is like in a bad space that you wouldn't expect to be in a bad space. Like Castle, I didn't know he was. You know, getting that sick. They show him how sick he was getting. Um. 
They show them going to more funerals unless unless people are showing up at these funerals. And what people got to understand in that era, it was a lot. People were dying left and right, you know. And then and yes, and I hate to say this, but people some people thought that, you know, as they say back in the day, the gays and the lesbians, they they this is a this is a gay man's disease and all kind of stuff. This is a, a lesbian disease. First of all, I hate it when people said that. And people in the healthcare was actually scared to handle anybody who had AIDS or HIV. I worked in home care. Okay, I worked in home care, I worked in health care. And they teach you how to, you know, how to take care of patients. You have to take care of yourself. Make sure you're safe. Because guess what? If we have a cold and we give it to them when they're very sick, they can die from what we gave them. Because their immune system is very weak. So they teach you how to handle AIDS and HIV patients. Because their immune system is weak. Especially, I'm sorry to say, if they're on their deathbed. You try to make them as comfortable as possible. And another thing was people got to the point where if you had a lesion on your face or even on your body and it was noticeable, you had AIDS. That was another sign, they say, um, for a person to have AIDS. If you was, you know, part of the LGBTQ community, oh my God, Oh, this and this and that. Oh, this, this is your fault. This is that. This is that. Well, excuse me. Straight people get it too. By having unprotect, unprotected sex. By sharing needles. You know, I just, it really bugged me that they would say this is a gay man's disease or, you know, or the LGBTQ community brought this disease. No, they did not. They got it for having unprotected sex or sharing a needle. But straight people was getting it too. It was just a lot of mis misinformed people back then. It really was. It was just ridiculous. Okay, so now they're at the ball. I know I'm probably skipping a scene or two, but it's okay. Electra's at the ball. She is killing it. You know Electra's going to kill it. Okay, she walks in and she's in her little extravagant outfit. She is always killing it, okay? Here come Ricky. Ricky killed it. Everybody's doing a good job. Honey, pray tell stepped out there. <laughs> what? Go ahead, pray. I was like, yes, honey, get it. Yes, pray tell. Pray tell was strutting. You hear me? He got tens across the board. Um, but I'm gonna go back to pray tell Frank Castle. Um, because I know I just skipped over that. It just broke my heart to see him in the bed and then walk with a cane and all those meds and stuff like that. So pray tell brought him to the ball. And of course, you know, Castle was trying to drink, which he should not have been drinking. And he said, put some vodka in that tonic water, whatever it was, seltzer water, whatever it was. And he ended up having a seizure. They ended up rushing him to the hospital. So, you know, that was that. Um, this episode really pulled on the heartstrings. It really did. It really pulled on the heartstrings. Okay, so we talked about Electra at the ball. We talked about Praytel strutting and doing his thing at the ball. I'm starting to really dislike Lamar. Lamar has become something terrible. Oh my goodness. I'm at the point where I cannot stand Lamar. He has become too much. You know, his attitude, he is just too much. I can't deal with Lamar. So... Um, the intervention. Baby, let me tell you something. Billy Porter could act. If that ain't acting, I don't know what is. He performed. You hear me? He performed in that intervention episode, that scene. Okay, so they all at Blanca's house and they're eating food and, you know, he wants his wine, he wants to drink because he don't eat after 9 o'clock. And they all had their letters. Well, Blanca had her letter Electra had her letter and Ricky had his and then Angel. So they, you know, Blanca was like, look, we care about you. We need to talk. Just alcohol abuse is not working. You know, in so many words, they confronted him about his alcoholism. And you know, like Pray Tell, when he feels like he's being attacked, he's going to come out. Okay. And when a person is sick with that disease, whether it's drugs or alcohol, 
and you come at them, you're not ambushing them, but to them, they want to feel like they are being ambushed when all you're trying to do is talk to them to get them to see that what they're doing is not right and they kill themselves. They don't see it that way. They see it as an ambush. Everyone is attacking them. You get what I'm saying? So that's how he felt. And everyone had to say, and Ricky told him that, you know, if you keep on doing this, I'm going to leave. And Ricky did, and Ricky ended up leaving him. He did. He, um, he lost Ricky. And that that was and that was hard, you know. That was hard. I, I didn't want them to break up, but how much can you take, you know, when your loved one is doing things and you're tired of seeing them do the same thing and and it's, and it's not get any better. So, um, you know, with that, and him and Blanca got into it in that hallway. But baby, when he's talking about y'all better check yourself before y'all come and check my inventory, I was like, okay. Ray, come through. He told everybody about themselves and he called Angel Crackhead. Yo, he brought it out. He he brought out he brought it out, honey. He brought it out. But I hate to see them get to that point, you know. And I did not know Damon slipped. So that's not he's not in this episode. And I hope he comes back. But it just seems like this this season everybody is going through something, you know. Everybody's going through something. Whew. Um, so Blanca's getting ready to go out with Christopher again with him and his mom and they are talking and the mom is just why you don't you know why you don't have this name just being an uppity bougie person and Blanca let it be known listen I'm a trisexual whatever transsexual sorry and um, she let it be known you know what she was and the mother is looking all surprised and her son oh well you know you know you always wanted children and this and that when the kids become grown you may want a different direction for your children but they gotta walk their own path they have to make their own path and walk it all you have to do as a parent is be there at some point whatever they fall off in the road you be there for your children to pick them back up and get them back on the right path. That's what you do. I mean, because when you try to control your children and say this and this and that, it pushes them further away from you. We may not like everything our children do. We may not accept everything they do. But we have to make sure we are there for your kids. You have to make sure you're there for them. Because if you're not there for them, someone else is going to be there for them. And it may, they may not have their best interest at heart. You know, so what I had to learn this too, that when your children become grown, they're going to make their own path. They're going to walk that path. But wherever it gets hard for them, at some point at that road, be there for them. Help them get back them. Help them get back on the right track. And I think the mother needs to do that. I know that's her only child. And I know she wanted him to get married to a woman you know, and have children with a woman. But he chose this path. He loves Blanca. That's who he wants to be with. And that's that. Sometimes it is hard for parents to to, to, to accept it. But if she loves her child, they have to have conversations about it. Let her ask questions in a respectful manner. And then a relationship will be much stronger. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. You know, I, I'm going to sit here and be totally honest with you guys. My sisters, my cousins, you know, they 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 tried what they was going to try. I never judged them because it's not my place to judge them. All I can ask is, is this is something that you want to do. And they were young at the time. Now they're adults. They have their own family. They have their own life. I'm not one of those older sisters to be like, well, you know you shouldn't be doing that. They got to figure it out. Everybody got to figure out their life. I'm not hard to talk to. I'll be there for them when I can. You know, they want me to. But I would never tell somebody else what to do with their life. You know? But this episode really pulled on the heartstrings. I enjoyed it. So if you watch Pose, did you, oh my grandchildren are screaming. 
If you like polls, did you enjoy this episode? Let me know what you enjoyed about, you know, what you enjoyed. And let me know how you feel about Christopher's mother. Because Miss Things is doing too much. She's too bougie for me. All right, you guys, that's it. And I will talk to you later.